So let's start over again. All right. Welcome to Pepper Talk Radio. This is Shane and Scott here on K Talk AM sixteen forty in Salt Lake City. Signing on for our last sign off. Signing on for the last our last live broadcast. We will continue to podcast do on podcasts, occasion. Uh, and because of certain events coming up here in the near future, it's going to be a bit of a delay. Yes, I have the baby apocalypse coming. I've got a nineteen month <laughs> old and another one's gonna be due another one's due in a week and a half. Not even a week and a half. Holy crap. Uh, baby two is going to be here, and the wife's out of commission for six weeks because of the uh, the Listen. type of surgery she yeah. has to do. Um, but uh, so we felt an opportune time uh, f- for this and other reasons mm-hmm. that uh, we end our run here, our three years, two months, and however many days here at K Talk in Salt Lake City, uh, broadcasting live, and it will uh, reduce a little bit of stress every week. Uh, wow, <laughs> at least you're for me. Nuts. Oh, do we get? Oh, I don't see the phone ring. Well, we had three different lines going. Line three is going on right now. Oh, I see. Okay, well, that's you one might that doesn't well, flash on there. Might as well take it. Might as well take it here. Let's see if I can do this here. Uh, let's see here. Bring the phone on. Hello, you're here live on Purple Talk Radio. Can you hear us? Still ringing. Oh, they're gone. There we go. There's a nice dial tone. I'll let that sit there for a second. <laughs> or not. Or not. Sorry about that. If you want to call back, feel try free again, to call try back. Again. We'll but see if uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. If you've ever wanted to call in to the show and ask us a question or comment, now's your chance. It's your last chance on, on, on the radio. But we're always on Facebook. You know, we, we connect with a, lot, a fair amount of people there, and we have great conversations, and I really enjoy that. And I hope that we continue to do that, with, especially with the locals, especially mm-hmm. with the locals. You know, this is where we live. This is where you know, we're, we're, we're very much attached to you. So oh, yes. we hope you also feel the same and would like to connect with us. So today... We want to make a little bit different, a little bit more special. Yes, a little so bit more rounding important. out the year of opportunity mm-hmm. and focusing into the spiritual side of preparedness. Yes, um, and I what I would like, to, what I've been contemplating is we want to say things to you today that we haven't said before, right? That we envision that we would say to you if it were the last time. You'd hear from us, which is not going to be right. If you want, it's to just the last podcast, time on air. Just the last time we're going to be broad- broadcasting live here on, on air. Yes, and so we have contemplated this and uh, come up with some things that we would want to truly try and reach out to touch your hearts, touch your minds, inspire you to have the same vision that we have. Yes, or similar. Let me say similar vision that, that we have. Well, I think for the most part, most preppers have. Uh, some factors are the same, mm-hmm. right? Um, you really can't get into prepping without having a, um, oh, without having a spiritual awakening of sorts. Absolutely right? agree. Without having, without having a, a, oh wow, this is a more challenging world that we live in than you know the media leads you to believe, or this is, mm-hmm. you know. So you start off like educationally wise, like in certain ways, but I think a lot of it turns spiritual, um, as, especially if you look at the Old Testament. You know, for me, most people I talk to are religious; um, they are spiritual, and so their their preparedness. A lot of people go back to Daniel, or not to Daniel, sorry, to uh, to Joseph. You know, mm-hmm. in the seven mm-hmm. years of of feast and the seven years of famine, so um, because everyone's like, well, hey, yeah. it just makes sense, and that's really where it started for me. Is my family always taught, hey, store away for a rainy day. So and he was much more. And there's a phone line. Let's go ahead and and take that. Hello, you're live here on Purple Talk Radio. Did you have a question or comment for us? So this is your last show, huh? This is our last live broadcast. Thanks for calling in. Well, what did you, what'd you have for I guess, us? I guess the thank you's in order. Um, I appreciate we that. Appreci- I appreciated your show, and uh, you know, I just want to thank you guys for your time and and your efforts and. I hope the best for you. Well, we awesome. we certainly Thank do you. appreciate that. That's uh, you know about all we get out of the show. But let me let me uh, step back. I mean, that's that's not obviously get well, all we get out of the show. To learn, you must teach. The or the best way to learn is to teach. And so I think, and I would like to think that more than anything, and you know, this is kind of kind of sound like a Sunday school this Sunday school lesson. That's kind of what this whole show is going to sound a little bit like a Sunday school lesson. Is is of course when we when we say okay in preparing for this lesson. I learned more for myself, right? 
Right. I think that's the absolute case for the past three years we've brought, been broadcasting. Absolutely. We just jumped right into this. We've never done this, never done this before, live broadcast other than you know interviews here and there for for Preppercon, <laughs> but uh, which Scott did quite a few. Thirty eight. The but, first year yeah. of Preppercon. Thirty eight interviews on TV and radio before the event, and so that's what capped this whole thing off and launched it off. Yeah, exactly. And, and but obviously doing this for yourself when we're here in the studio by ourselves, you know, it's been a learning experience for me. And that's, I think, for where I've found the most value. And we hope, of course, you found some value as well. So thank you very much for the, for the call. And, and it's very much appreciated. All right, we'll let you go there. All right. So the so so as I as I was saying is that we want to say things that we would say to you as if this were our last broadcast. Right. So, and and kind of, I was kind of starting into this, this last, uh, last show where we're talking about, okay, what would you do if you knew you only had six weeks left to prepare? So as Scott was bringing up, we called this year, the year of opportunity, 2018, mm-hmm. the year of opportunity. So what if that opportunity to, to prepare both physically, both temporally and spiritually, what if that was, it came to an end here in four weeks? We're now, only you know four weeks away from the end of the year. Last time you know we, we brought this up was about six weeks. What would you do? Keep in mind this is a scenario. This isn't a prediction. This is you know this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want you freaking that out. out, running out, right? Like this isn't War of the Worlds night. What was that? Whatever year that went right, out. Right. We want you to just think for a minute and ponder for a minute. What? How would that change how you think and how you feel right now? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that's that's exactly where I was trying to go with this and. You know, one thing that, you know, that's a question we get, you know, I think probably pretty regularly from our personal conversations is, well, mm-hmm. when do you think this is going to happen, yada, yada. And I think that's always the question is when. Now, and, and the truth is, it doesn't matter when. Uh, you need to be prepared now. And if you put it off, you're going to continue to put it off and procrastinate and you're not going to be ready. So uh, if you desire, <coughs> excuse me, if you desire to be prepared, if that's your true desire, then what's stopping you now? We have been, as I'm going to say, we've been commanded to watch and be ready. It's not watch and prepare. You know, watch and start to get ready, you know, kind of casually. Like be ready. It's it be ready. So it doesn't matter when. You just need to be ready now. So if you, it takes you four weeks to get ready, do it. If, it takes, if you can do it in a week, you know. Well, and that's why we've called this Radio for the Ready-Minded, mm-hmm. right? We want you to have a mindset uh, continual mindset of being ready, being prepared. And when you find gaps, fill the gaps. Um, when you find major errors, fix things, right? Correct them. Um, if you're brand new at this, you do the best you can with what you have and you go from there. Um, but it is it is be ready. Mm-hmm. Be ever ready. Radio for the ready-minded. Always be ready. Always be aware always be cognizant i mean there's so many things you could really say but ready is isn't just oh i've got some gear mm-hmm. ready is how you live your life topic being ready you know it's 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 being w- when someone walks up to you and says well, why are you carrying a handgun well why are you carrying that pocket mm-hmm. knife all the time mm-hmm. well what's with the extra bag in your back of your car oh, i'm ready you know, what, what's, ready for what you know those are the conversations that you could use that as a learning opportunity and help make one more prepared person, which is one less risk later down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, Or you can just be like, oh, don't worry about it and leave off, you know, leave. Mm -hmm. Or try to start a political bash conversation with someone. It's a good opportunity to teach, right? So everything in in the world of preparedness is an opportunity to be ready and to be teaching and to be be helping. So for all of your New Year's resolutions, Mm -hmm. um, if you've been saying, man, I need to get my concealed carry permit, What's stopping you? What's yeah. holding you back? And w- what about oh, your ham radio license? You know, I know I'm almost there. It's been you, two it, years. It, it's exactly you know this, and is, I just have to buckle down yeah. and do it. And, and that, that's just what I'm alluding to. Is you don't no more hesitation. Mm-hmm. You need to be ready now. A- and I think the absolute truth is uh, anything can happen at any day, at any yes. moment. Uh, there are some times, some days that are probably a more probable than others. Um, like well, case a, in point, Monday. seven point zero earthquake. In, there we go in, in Alaska today. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, you never know what's going to happen or what's around the corner. And and that's that's typically what happens is there's an event that motivates people to say, 
huh, you know, I probably should get ready. Or if you already have that mindset of, of being ready, uh, but are maybe sedated. You know, you're uh, comfortable. Your life is easy. And so if you, do, I mean, you you may call yourself awake, you may consider yourself, I'm awake, I see, I see what's coming, I see the, the debt the country's in, I see uh, all the horrible things, all the evil in the world, and I see this, but you continue to do nothing about it, mm-hmm. there's obviously a disconnect there that needs to be spanned. When well, you're bringing yourself under condemnation, right? You're, you're making your life harder than it needs to be by not doing things that you should be doing. And that goes in every aspect of life, right? If you're not eating healthy, you're going to have more problems, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm going to have sugar and caffeine all day, every day. Oh, good luck with diabetes because mm-hmm. that's, you know, this morning I had actually had a passenger in my car who I was taking to um, to the University of Utah Hospital mm-hmm. because of dialysis. He has to mm-hmm. go in three times a week. Why? Because he used to eat candy and sugar drinks and that was it. And mm-hmm. I'm like, are you serious? He told you, yeah. He's 40 years old. He's been doing dialysis for 12 years. Oh. And he's like, if you know better, you owe yourself. You owe it to yourself and your family to do better. It's like, you bring, he actually is like, you bring yourself under condemnation when you choose to eat bad. Because guess what? The knee problems, the joint pain, the, this and that, the heart attack, the but when, diabetes. And when you're in the situation, you don't see, necessarily to see it or understand it until you've got the 2029 20, yeah, side, something's right? taken away from you, it's... Yeah, it's a lot more obvious. So hopefully we're pointing some of those things out to where it gives you some motivation to say, you know, I don't want to look in the rearview mirror and, and regret mm-hmm. eating candy, you know, yeah. from half my Not life. taking care of my body. Not taking care, right? of, myself, not yeah. taking care of my brain. Not yeah. taking care of my family's emergency preparedness. So before this, this, this first break, um, I do want to say, even though we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or four weeks, definitely want to give you a warning, a sincere and urgent warning that the time is near. And when I say the time is near, that anything can happen. That, you know, the financial system could collapse. I mean, it could could be a a whole range of things. But those are all possibly happening very soon. So that's our our warning here, and we'll, we'll go on to our next topic after the break. Thank you so much for listening to us here on Purple Talk Radio on KTalk. And we will catch you guys on the other side of this break. As we come back in from uh, this break, we appreciate your supporting our sponsors. And, uh, of course, we want to say that uh, you know our thoughts and prayers go out to those involved in the earthquake in, in uh, Anchorage. Um, still learning about uh, the effects. Yeah, it's pretty, happening, pretty but, devastating. Uh, I mean, some, some roads destroyed. Yeah, 7.0. I've that's seen pictures of buildings. Um, I haven't seen anything toppled yet, but... Again, I've been working all morning, so I haven't yeah. had a chance to really read up on it. And let this uh, this event, I guess, motivate you, because we know we're overdue for earthquake here in, on the Wasatch Front. And uh, and the size and frequency of earthquakes are increasing all over mm-hmm. the world, so please, yes, please, please get get prepared. And, you know, getting into our, I guess, topic of, of the day is, you know, these are all signs. Mm-hmm. They are. They are both the signs in heaven and on earth, earthquakes. This is the judgment of of God, judgment of the Lord, is what we're experiencing. Every single thing, sign in the heaven on, and on earth, are to inspire us or to motivate us, to teach us to open our eyes, to stop being asleep, mm-hmm. to be motivated, and to maybe realize uh, our life is really easy. We're, we're very materialistic. Um, but we are, even myself, obviously being wrapped up in, in the nine to five, um, somewhat sedated, right? Somewhat numb to really the things that are truly happening. So we want to talk today about a topic we've been meaning to talk about really for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and that topic is spiritual preparedness. We talk a lot about temporal preparedness, about things, about gear, uh, when it comes down to the most important thing is to be spiritually be prepared, be ready to meet our maker when the time comes. Whether that's... As ready as you can as, be, right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot that really plays into that. And and some of you may be rolling your eyes at us, and that's fine. Yeah. Some of you may be nodding your head with us. Yeah. And so this is really for you. 
Um, for those that you might be rolling your eyes, yep, stay tuned. You might you might learn something. But there's there's a lot to be learned from the spiritual aspect or spiritual side of preparedness. I mean, that's that was the catalyst that got me to start PrepperCon. You know, the whole purpose behind PrepperCon was to create prepared community, prepared families, right? Because prepared families create prepared communities. Um, but it was the realization that you cannot go down the road of preparedness very far, physical preparedness, without it merging with the spiritual preparedness, the reasons behind why we prepare. You may say, oh, it's because your family. Well, that's, that's a belief or a, a God-given thought process, mm-hmm. right? A stewardship that you've, you've earned. Right, and so yeah, that's important to to focus on and take care of, and so that's really why, where we want to go with this is to really get into the meat of it, and and not just why are you preparing, but spiritually, what are you doing to be spiritually prepared? Now, I've never really considered myself uh, a spiritual guy, you know. Yes, I go to church, you know. I uh, I do what I'm. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm obedient to the. You're religious and obedient. I'm religious and I'm obedient, but I've never really considered myself spiritual until. More recently, right? I, I found this quote. This quote's by Elder Bruce R. McConkie. Many of you know the name. Uh, and th- he, d- he described spirituality this way. Spirituality is the ability, the talent, the capacity to recognize truth. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. Because that is, I, w- I don't want to say that's all, that's what I've been about for many years. But I'm constantly trying to find out what's true what the truth is. Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't apply to just to religion. It doesn't apply just to God or, or, or beliefs. It, belo- it applies to all aspects of prepping, both temporal and spiritual. And so the spirituality really is being able to recognize truth. And now let's think a little deeper about what does that really mean and, and, and what does it mean to me and how do, how do I use that? How do I apply that? So for me, is is once you learn that truth, you have to follow it. You have to apply it. Right. So maybe let's take a sample from a, a temporal side, uh, some kind of truth. Um, okay, the truth is I need to feed my family, right? Okay. How do I do that? I have to have, to have a job. I have to, I have to work. I have to create some income. I've got to, I've got to go that way. So... As you learn that truth, the truth is I can't just just quit and go go live on a on a farm or whatever and have a homestead. Uh, I have, there are certain truths and, and they may be small, they may be, seem insignificant, but there are truths in there that we each need to recognize. What is that? What is that truth uh, about a lot of different aspects in in selecting in choosing your preps? There's a lot of pr- a lot of truth in okay. What did what do I need to buy next to support my family? What's the correct what is the right choice? Right. It's all inspiration. Are you going to say something? Well, that that goes back to the physical side, but really the spiritual side can really direct you in your physical preparedness. Mm-hmm. Um, the spiritual side of preparedness is what got my wife into preparedness. It's what got my... My family's always been, like generation after generation, very self-reliant, um, very self-sufficient as much as possible, but then we always rely on the Lord for guidance and direction. And, and so you could say I've always been a spiritual person. I've always been a religious person. Um, but to, for me, to look at our future, and there is so much excitement for the future. Like, I am so excited mm-hmm. for the future. There is a lot of crap that's about to happen. But it's going to be miraculous to watch. It'll be a time of miracles, undoubtedly. Um, there will be a lot of time for sorrow, too. But it goes back to the heart of what is truth. And you ask a question, mm-hmm. and the scriptures tell us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm-hmm. That's Jesus Christ. Now, I don't talk about him on the radio, but I should. And so I am here today to say that I believe in Christ. He lives, and he is my redeemer. Amen. And he is the one that guided me to start PrepperCon. So if you went to that and you enjoyed it, Thank him. It, he's he's the one that guided us to do this radio show. So if you've listened to this radio show and you've appreciated it and you've enjoyed it, thank him. He is the one that's guiding you to get better prepared. 
and now we want you to focus on our, I think what are we what we call really our top three spiritual preparedness tips or pointers. Yeah, and you know, and I um, of course also want to say the same <clears throat> as you. Um, the reason I don't necessarily talk about my testimony, I'm going to use that word testimony, mm-hmm. because I get very emotional and it's difficult for me to communicate. So if I get into that, um, I end up sounding like a blubbering idiot. To well, be it's personal, honest. and it is it's it's very, very personal. personal. And, uh, you know, it's easy to share, you know, with Scott, with, with family and friends, um, but to, you know, broadcast it out there <clears throat> does not, if I don't do that, it does not mean that I do not uh, have a testimony or, 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 or the like. Uh, yeah. I do, and I believe in Christ, and I believe um, he's our Redeemer and our Savior. Uh, but, yeah, we, we, Scott and I had been talking about uh, some, you know, we, we live by the survival rules of three in the prepping mm-hmm. world, right? Uh, three minutes without air. Three. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Three hours without shelter. Uh, you, it's hard. It, it's hard to survive in, in harsh condition. Three days without water. Three weeks without food. So we have these survival rules that we pretty much live by. And most people call it survival rule three because they think there's three rules, right? Right. It's it's the they forget the air. They focus on the shelter, the water, and, and the, the food. food. And most people. Th- Prioritize it backwards. I gotta have my food. Yep. You know, that's why we're an obese nation, right? I'm part of the problem. Working on the solution, but that's 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 it, right? But so we've come up with our three survival rule of three. Spiritual, Not like spiritual survival three minutes. Rules. You can't be like, oh, three minutes walk with God every day. No, our we have three rules. Right. Right. So that's where we we're going to differentiate. An, and of course, we have many other rules, but we, you know, we're hoping we have time to talk about these three. Yes. So the first rule is is a daily accountability to to God, right? A daily walk with God, if you will. You know, spiritually, are you doing something every day, because you should be, to connect with God? Yeah, and I, I worded that slightly differently, although we came up with pretty much the same first, I don't know if we call it first priority, but our, our, our first rule is not leaning to our own understanding, you know, not right. relying on ourselves to... Uh, make the right choice. Oh, I, I can do this. You know, I can do this all by myself. I'm smart enough. I'm strong enough. I can do this myself. No, I think admitting that, you know, I don't know it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a pretty good understanding. I know where to start. Yes. But I don't know necessarily how to go about it or where to finish, where that's going to, en- where I'm going to end up. And so, uh, like you say, be accountable. Do something that's, uh, hold yourself accountable every day. And of course, the first obvious thing is prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And without getting into details or saying, you know, oh, I'm not so good at prayer. I don't pray. You know, all that, which you typically hear, right? Everyone likes <laughs> to air their whatever. Everyone likes to air exactly. their dirty laundry so exactly. long as it's not like a massive stain. It's just like exactly. I spilled the ketchup. I don't agree with it. I do my best not to do it. But prayer is much more important than I think. Uh, has more importance than we than we give it. I think. Yeah. In general, you can call it prayer. You can call it meditation. Whatever you call it, like that mm-hmm. that time to really open your heart and your mind to God, right, and lay everything out. And He does know our thoughts and our feelings yep. and our intentions. He knows everything. But it's again, think of it like you're speaking to your own parents. Would you not? How how long would you go without going over to mom and dad's or calling them on the phone and and talking to them? And just having a conversation, just sitting down and talk with him. Well, I think it's it's like for me, it's more like a mentor. Like, he is my heavenly father, but it's like a mentor, right? Mm-hmm. I I seek out if I'm going to focus on business, I want the best business mind I can come up with, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm going to focus on on preparedness, I'm going to go for the pre- best preparedness minds I I know of, and I'm lucky because I know a lot of those and both of those, but there's none greater mm-hmm. than God. I mean, that's the beauty of it. And so, spending that little little quality time. I don't want to go quantity time. I want to go quality time. Because if you've got a minute and you make that minute amazing, thank you. Good job. Mm-hmm. If you've got an hour and you make that hour amazing, great. But it's it's personal. It's between you and God, right? Take that time. Um, because you'll learn things, and I learned a lot of things preparedness-wise with that alone time with God, um, that walk with God on a daily basis. And, and as I've done that, you know, PrepperCon was a roaring success the three years that I ran it because of that, because the purpose mm-hmm. was his purpose, not mine. And that's why we helped over 36,000 people in those three years. And then the fourth year, well, they only had 2000 people. 
the difference is, is blatant mm-hmm. when you dedicate your, your time with the Lord. Yeah, that's, that's um, good Why this show example. has continued on? Well, we've dedicated our time. You know, this is service. Service is time with God. And as much as you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Mm-hmm. That's why we do this show, because we want to help. We want to be of service. And I think part of this underneath this, the same rule fits in, you know, learning by inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, having that personal revelation directly with our Heavenly Father is, again, kind of like I was kind of poorly alluded to previously in just helping us make the right decisions or whatever it might be. Take all of those problems and those questions to to God, to the Lord, and say, "What's you know, help me f- make the right decision, whatever it might be. Whether that, it's something as, as silly, it may seem as silly as, as buying the right piece of gear, spending your money right. wisely. I mean, that may seem trivial, but it really isn't. And it's not too small of an item to take to your Heavenly Father and ask Him, you know, how should I best spend my money that's going to help my family be most prepared and be the most efficient use and, and smart use of my money? And that mindset and that heart set, right, that, that actually leads into rule number two, mm-hmm. like being mm-hmm. teachable, being humble, mm-hmm. being willing to ask for help to learn. Um, I can't tell you how many things I've learned from Shane. Like, I could literally write a book of all the things that I've learned from Shane because Shane, Shane is the analytic side of the preparedness between the two of us. We did write a book. We just we never did. published it. We just it. never published it. <laughs> but I could literally write another book just on what you taught me. Um, but it, it comes down to, you know, for example, self-defense. I've got some great mentors that I go to mm-hmm. that have taught me a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I try to go into every learning opportunity as open to learning as possible, as open to teachable mindset. and, 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 and Because otherwise, it, what's the point of being there? Right. What's the point of being into preparedness if you're not willing to learn and to fix things and to improve upon things? Um, and we'll get to really go into this a little bit more in the, in the next segment. But it, it really starts off with being humble. Like you, you talk to God because you're humble. Right. You become teachable. The more willing you're, you are to submit to his will. And then that goes into everything else you do. Like, OK, ham radio mm-hmm. that that I need to imp- repent on because I have not gotten help. I've done a lot of independent study stuff, but I haven't finished it. And, and the thing is, I guarantee you, in every af- any aspect, there's going to be plenty of people out there that are willing to help. Mm-hmm. And you know, free of charge without expecting to receive anything back. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I, I would like to say we're one of them. You know, if you ever need any advice, you know, come to us. Yeah. You know, we we'll would still like, be there. We're trying to emulate, you know, uh, our, the quality and traits of our, our Heavenly Father, right? Yes. And so that's, you know, the, the things that Scott and I talk about the most are not prepping. Mm-hmm. It really isn't. It's more gospel talk, topics. Because if it comes down to um, not surviving but being saved, you know, in the kingdom of God, I'll take the first. I'll take the, the latter. Right? I'll, yeah. Kingdom of God or nothing. But I intend to survive both, both temporally and spiritually. But that's my personal choice. I, I know I've, I have friends and others out there, and maybe you have the point, just the, the, the thought of, okay, if, if I don't survive, oh well, you know? Well, it's funny because that kind of goes into the movie mindset. I, I, you hear the phrase a lot of times in movies, well, if I'm going to hell, I'm taking you with me. Yeah, there you, go. you know, I'm on the other side of that, and I'm like, well, I'm going to try to go to heaven, and I'm going to take you with me, mm-hmm. right? I want to help as many people as we can. And that, and that comes from humility and, and confidence in the Lord. But it's the trials that we go through that get us to that path, right? It's not an easy path. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's a very expensive path, right? Because it costs in you more a lot. One, more than one way, right? Yeah, more than but one. it also molds you and trains you and teaches you and coaches you in the way that you could be or should be, and it, and that is all starting with humility. I mean, what's what's the thing? The biggest thing you've learned this this year in preparedness, and where did it come from? I'll have to get back to you after this commercial break. I'm okay with that. I'll wait. All right, cool. Thanks for li- listening to us. Feel free to call in and give us your comments on maybe your own spiritual survival rules. We'd love to hear whatever you have to say. Uh, thanks for listening. You're listening to Shane and Scott here on Prepper Talk Radio. Please join us after the break. All right, and we continue on with the, the conversation. We hope you're enjoying it. Feel free to call in, 801-254-1640, and, and give us your, your thoughts, your, your impressions. Um, 
you know, as we chat during the break, of course, we have additional ideas and thoughts we want to share with you. Um, but the question remains. Yes, the question remains. What have I learned? And I think, and it's surprising, and Scott and I are, are, are always on this, the same page here, is I think what I've learned, and maybe this is a bit of a cop-out answer, it's not a direct answer to, uh, to your question, is what, what I've learned the most, I think, is, is the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And I, right. I know you've heard that saying before. Yeah. I know it's it's out there, but I, it's absolutely true. You know, you, well, you look at your the kids. Expanse increases as you learn a little bit. The greater mm-hmm. that expanse increases, of oh, now my field of vision is wider. Mm-hmm. Holy cow! And and you look at the look at the opposite. Look at your kids. You know, they they're born. They think they know everything, right? You know, no, that didn't happen until they're a teenager. Well, or, or my, you know, my kids when they're six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, and then th- yeah, well, that's then true. The, in the it teens, just gets worse when they're a teenager. It does get a little worse for figure. some reason. But you know, my six-year-old, she's all, I know how to do. It. I can do that. You know, and of course she doesn't, right? Yep. But uh, it's just a stark contrast, I think, between as you get older, you realize how much you don't know, and but when you're young, younger, you think you know everything. So, uh, so that's an answer to your question, there, Scott. Uh, but we want to continue on, I guess, with... Rule number three. Okay, with rule number three. Uh, and rule, rule number three, the way I, I had it written down, is to warn your neighbor. Mm-hmm. And I know you had it... Mine was slightly different. Slightly different, but, but it's but basically still the, same. The, same, the same rule. Um, you know, once you've been warned, it's your responsibility to warn your neighbor, right? And so what does that really mean? What is... Well, if you're listening to our show, you're, you've been warned, right? You should be increasing your expansive knowledge. But, but there is a little caveat neighbors. there, I think, though, okay. right? Um, this goes back to rule number one and number two, mm-hmm. right? If you're warned, you can only truly be warned if you learn that truth and if you're inspired. So if you have any, of course, in, in the church, it's uh, we learn by inspiration, right? Mm-hmm. We learn truth by inspiration. And so when we're inspired, we feel that spirit tell us the truth, that's our warning right there. It's not like, okay, Shane and Scott, they're saying, okay, hey, warning, 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 watch out, something's going to happen. You're not going to do anything about it unless you're taught the truth, right? Unless you receive that confirmation of the truth. Unless you realize the, the truth, right? And thus, our first two rules of, of spiritual survival, I guess you right. could say. And, you know, I just want to throw out there, there's a really cool book out there I read when I was a kid. I mean, I was I was probably eleven or twelve. Okay, when I read this book. It's called "Spiritual Survival in the Last Days." Oh wow! Okay, it is an LDS book. You know, it's a church book, um, and it's Jorgensen, I think, are the authors. Good book. Um, has a lot of heavy stuff in it, and a lot of very simple stuff. So, just throw that out to you. Um, but so this has been a topic been on my mind since I was a youth. Spiritual survival, um, and as you know, we were saying it. It really doesn't matter. If you have all the food, storage, the water, you have the shelter, you have everything you need to survive temporally, and you lose your soul. But the other way around, it does count. If you don't survive physically, the the trials that are coming in the last days, the you know go to the Book of Revelations, you know go to the prophecies of Isaiah, the, the, and Daniel, and so forth. If you don't survive temporally, that's okay. I don't like that mindset personally, right? But it's okay as long as you survive spiritually. Uh, so I don't agree when, when people say, you know what, yeah, I don't have preps, I don't have food storage, I don't have water storage, but I'm good with God. And so if I die, that's okay. I get it, you know, I get it, and that's where you need to be first. But for me, in my house, we're going to be prepared. We want to we wanna be there when, when Christ comes I wanna back. I want to see right? all the cool miracles. I want to see, exactly, I want to be right? part of it. I want to see all the it's cool stuff. The, the scriptures call it the great and terrible day of the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Great for not one the, reason, terrible for another not the reason. Meh reason, you know, not the like. Eh, oh, that's cool. Not a, oh no, it's it's amazing to yeah. live in this time. It really is. And when your eyes are opened, and you can see all that's going on, you can truly see that it's it's upon us. I mean, let, let let's get into some of the realities for a second. There is a one world government being formed right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. It is growing and it is dominating in power, and and if you don't see it you're living a, an oblivious life away from it Revelations but as soon as you see 12, it yeah revelation 17 is is probably the biggest one that talks about it but it yeah. starts in 12 but it really it really is more than just a government it's actually all the subliminal messaging that's in your media that's all the subliminal messaging that's in your in your television um, the music that we hear uh, it's getting more and more 
in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've been getting subliminally programmed for years, decades. And, and I think one thing that uh, – another thing I've learned over the past probably three or four years is that Satan, he's a smart guy. You know, you, you think about, okay, I work for a big corporation. There are plans for everything. Everything is planned. Everything is forecasted. Uh, nobody moves ahead without a plan and a clear vision of, of what's going forward. And I tell you, Satan has the same he, – he works the same way. He has a plan. He's smart. He he. He is working. He has a plan moving forward, and so for him, to, for you to think that um, you know he's kind of chaotic, that he's disorganized, that he he's just out there screaming, well, ah! you know, and and trying to get you to do what's wrong. No, it's it's calculated. It's planned. It's it's uh, it's calculated chaos. It is right. It's it's like Joker in the Batman movie, the most recent one. His his one happiness is in causing chaos in other people and it starts off little and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger right but oh looks like we got a caller all right cool let's go ahead and try and and do this here and take it off mute line number three hello you're live oh. you're live here on pepper talk radio you have a comment or question for us hello yes are you there oh yeah i'm here we keep making excuses fellas for those that enforce the tyranny yes I think that's one of the biggest things out there that we're all failing to do is to step it up. I, I stopped a policeman in the parking lot the other night. I said, officer, could you, could I get some information? He said, oh, certainly. And then I asked him, what are you going to do when you are told to go confiscate somebody's firearms? He wasn't expecting that question. Mm-hmm. And he thought for a moment, I'm putting him on the spot emotionally, spiritually, yeah. physically, and he was all alone, and he said, I don't think I will enforce that. I said, well, think is not quite good enough. Make your decision now. And even if now. you don't, your leadership knows who will. You have to stand, and you swore an oath to do so, probably. Mm-hmm. Either way, you have, to dis- you have to stand between your coworkers, the enemy, and your neighbor, because what happens to your neighbor will eventually happen to you. The blue line disarmed England, and now their grandchildren walk the mean streets of London totally helpless. Mm-hmm. And they continue to enforce the tyranny. It's not you don't get a pass just because you're collecting a check. It's it's look if you need right. a, if you have to quit your job, you can come live at my house. Like you say, no excuses. Yep. There, there, there's no way out here. Yeah, and they've escalated it too. Like if you look at the UK, it went from guns. Now they're like no knives. Mm-hmm. Yep. Even kitchen knives are getting taken away if they've been modified yep. at all. like it's it's ridiculous and we need as a society we need to wake the hell up and and i think the point is th- there's right and wrong there's good there's evil there's black and there's white there's nothing in between and i think we blur that line way too much you know like like you're you're talking about this this cop about okay what would you do it's the, it's either you have the right answer or you have the wrong answer there's nothing in between yep so yeah thanks for the call Great, uh, yeah. great thing to to keep in mind is not just um, how we will react, but think about how others are going yep. to react as well. Um, Which goes back into warn thy neighbor. Exactly, right? warn your neighbor. Our and, last and, caller and, just and did a great job of that with uh, the police officer. It was a huge wake up call. Yeah, I bet you for the done. police officer going, "Holy crap! Someone's actually asking me this question. I have, I have never what, given what I, yeah. thought to. You know, I've heard it before, but I've never given thought yeah. to." Seen it in passing, but never really contemplated. Okay, I'm forced with the with the decision. What am I going to do? Am I going to make that hard decision, or am I going to? Well, you know, I got to pay my bills. Or if I don't do this, I'm going to get fired. And and especially in, you know, know, in these next next years, year year years, uh, when if you have a secure job, there aren't going to be many. You know, one of those might be you know law enforcement, maybe a secure job, and there's nothing else out there available. Are you going to make that hard decision to lose your job and? But do the right thing. So, yeah, great call. So, warn your neighbor. Warn your neighbor. And, you know, of course, going to uh, uh, back to the scriptures, if you have been warned, it is your duty, it is your obligation to warn your neighbor. So what exactly does that mean, and how do we do that? I mean, it's, uh, f- for us, I mean, this is a little bit easier here. We've got a radio show. We've got a radio show. We've, We've got had a podcast. A radio show. But and and this is something I practice as often as I possibly can face to face, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because 
it's not an easy thing to do. It's not like, oh, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and you're going to scare people off. They're going to say, you're crazy, you're, you're a conspiracy nut, and they're not going to listen to you, and they're not going to take your warning. Right. And they're I've not going to be inspired, off. and they're going to feel that, that inspiration of the Spirit to say, oh, yeah, you're right, I need to get prepared. I've turned off that, uh, that function of telling all of my neighbors. Okay. Right. Um, because at some point you In have to realize type. that you're, throwing, you're casting pearls before swine. Mm-hmm. You know, there are certain neighbors that I've tried to talk to about it, and they're just like, oh, you're so dumb. And and the response is, no, I'm not. Thank you for your time. Mm-hmm. Peace. We're done. Yeah, and, and like, like what I was saying is I practice this. And so when I'm speaking to people one-on-one, I'm watching their their body, their yeah, body the language, responses, right? Their body responses. Language. And so I know how far I can push it and, and or pull it back or switch topic or uh, and judge, you know, judge where they're at. Yeah. And sometimes I have to, you know, throw my hands up in the air and say, nice talking to you. Hope to talk to you another time. Uh, because some people are not ready to be unplugged from the Matrix. But or they willfully refuse. Or willfully refuse. The truth. And so at what point do we say, you know what, you know, I'm not going to, I can't keep trying with this person because we're not going to get anywhere. That's, that is the hard point for me. Like, I would love to keep pushing and pushing mm-hmm. to some extent, but I'm just not going to get through. So if there's no one left to be receptive to, mm-hmm. you don't keep talking. You gotta you gotta drop those key, those yeah. clues those you find cues. a new audience, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> which really rounds out our survival rule of three. Mm-hmm. I mean, God will stop talking to you if you're not listening, yep. right? So follow His example. If He's going to find someone that wants to listen, He's still going to bless your life when you're obedient to Him, um, and even when you're not. I mean, He He still blesses our lives with so many wonderful things. But the reality is, is, is there's a protection of or a measure of protection, a measure of enlightenment, and a measure of of additional strength and abilities that come when you seek out the Lord and follow His His guidelines and and, and His commandments. And you're earnestly sir, seeking for truth to know truth. Yes, truth. So uh, let's go. Let's read that quote one more yeah. time before we. Spirituality have to is the ability, the talent, the capacity to recognize truth. So when we talk about spiritual survival, we're talking about your increased capacity to recognize the truth fat, more quickly, mm-hmm. more readily, more easily uh, as we get into more difficult times. When we're trying, when we're, uh, everybody's trying to deceive us from the, from the media to, you know, well, Satan himself, everything we hear, all the, we're trying to, we're being brainwashed and we have been for decades and decades. Oh yeah. And, but the key is to be able to separate that and recognize what is the truth? That's that's my biggest. I think one of my biggest fears in, in these last days is being able to know what the real truth is. Really I think my favorite that. acronym. You know, everyone talks about SHTF or the end of the world. It's it's really it's Tio Twacky, right? The mm-hmm. end of the world as, as we, we know, know it. it. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm super stoked for that. Like I am yeah, so you know, I ready for that. Well, I, I think I'm ready for that. I hope I'm for ready for a that. dramatic change for that shift, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because there are secret combinations, there are groups that are trying to orchestrate and do things, and they break the laws. And they don't care about the laws. They don't care about humanity. They, they are doing those things intentionally. Whether you think it's one group or hundreds or thousands of groups, they're everywhere. And as soon as someone makes a promise or or, or covenants that they're going to do a certain thing that violates the rights of another, they're automatically on that side. They're automatically in the bad bad guy realm. Mm-hmm. And so we need to step up our game and doing the right thing. And so this is our this is our warning cry. Yes. Wake up, pay attention, seek truth and go warn your neighbor. Consider it a call to repentance. And we will end our final live broadcast. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. We'll end our final live broadcast with thank you. We love and appreciate you. Stay strong. Stay with God. St- you know, and connect with us on Facebook. We love you guys. Folks, I'm Take Sanders. care. When I told folks my signature KFC podcast,